Welcome everyone. We're going to give people just a minute or two to join in in case we have a couple of late attendees and we will get started shortly. All right. The people that are on, if you want to drop in the chat where you're from, I would love to know where you guys are all tuning in from. I don't know if you're all in California or where you're at, but I would love to hear. LA, nice. Sweet. San Diego, that's where I'm from. Let's go. Awesome. Very cool. Ooh, Texas. And if you guys want to turn on your cameras, I'd love to see your faces. Also, no, no pressure. <laughs> All right. Well, I like this enthusiasm. So let's go ahead and get started, everyone. So welcome, welcome to our Team USA Tactics and Training. This time we have the pleasure of being joined by Lauren Haneke Hops to talk about wheelchair tennis, who's got their tennis balls ready. Um, it's an honor to have Lauren with us to take some time out, not only to give us a great workout, but share some of her wisdom. We're excited to have her here. So make sure you show her some love in the chat. Um, as a reminder, you guys are all Zoom experts, but please remain on mute so that we can hear all of the great things Lauren is going to share with us, but please join us on video. For those of you who are the superstars and joining us at a lot of these sessions, if you would like to get your points, please make sure that your name on your participant list matches your registration to get credit for being here. If you want to make sure you can see well, Go up into that right hand top part of your screen and make sure you hit the active speaker mode so you can see Lauren in a bigger view as she demonstrates some great things for us today. Just a reminder that we have some wonderful medical volunteers here, so if you are having any concerns, you can certainly message them privately in the chat and they will be able to better assist you if you have your videos on. I would also like to take a second just to thank our sponsors for this event. Um, a huge thank you to the Hartford, who is a sponsor of the summer series, as well as the Orthopedic Institute for Children, um, who is sponsoring this particular training and tactics session. I'd also like to thank our other sports sponsors, the Hanger Clinic, Spot Fox Sports, Gold Meets Golden, and of course, all of you guys for being here. So now let's introduce Lauren. So Lauren is a high performance wheelchair tennis athlete for the University of Alabama and the USA national team. She is a four time collegiate wheelchair national tennis wheelchair tennis national champion with the University of Alabama, where she completed her bachelor's degree and is now pursuing a master's degree in exercise science. As a wheelchair tennis player, she competes in tournaments both in this country as well as abroad. So she is a well-traveled uh, athlete and she coaches wheelchair ten tennis clinics for individuals of all ages. She is a Move United on-demand fitness instructor and has a strong passion to work as a strength and conditioning coach in adapted athletics. We are so grateful for Lauren to be here. So let's give her a round of applause or some love in the chat and I will turn it over to her. Awesome. Thanks guys. Um, so she gave a pretty good introduction, um, but I'm very glad to be here. Um, this is kind of the first time I've, I've done something like this. So um, bear with me. Hold on one second. I'm trying to change my view so I can see more of you guys. Let's see. Okay, hopefully that will work. Okay. Um, yes, so like she said, I play wheelchair tennis at University of Alabama. 
I'm a national team member um, on the high performance side. Um, I mean, team, team player. Um, and yeah, I've been playing wheelchair tennis for about 10 years now. So I didn't take it um, quite as seriously when I first started out. But when I was like a junior in high school, I started competing and then I found out I could play um, on the collegiate side, which is really cool. Um, I was recruited by Alabama and here I am. So I've had so many amazing opportunities because of this sport. I've met so many amazing people and I'm really excited to share a little bit about wheelchair tennis with you today. So let's go into the history. Um, wheelchair tennis was first started by a man named Brad Parks um, and then another man named Jeff, Jeff Minnenbreaker in 1976. And the really interesting about this um, is that they, Brad first started playing, he was injured in a skiing accident. He first started playing when he was in rehab. Um, so he went out to the courts with a friend, um, I think with Jeff, and they started playing in hospital chairs. So can you imagine how clunky that would be, hospital chairs? And then now how far we've come, it's just been um, amazing. But they, um, Brad Parks has really taken on the development of wheelchair tennis. He's really the one that, that really took it on and started it. He's the one that created the two bounce rule, which is really the only rule that separates us from able-bodied um, tennis. Um, so I think that that's really cool because you can go out on a court with anyone that's able-bodied and play just as if you were in a match, just, um, it's really cool. Anyway, so, um, and then wheelchair tennis of course has grown to like both the national and international um, levels and tournaments all around the world. And can anyone guess if you drop in the chat bar, a few cities or whatever of where the first wheelchair tennis tournament took place? Just guess a few, anywhere, any city. Let's see here, what do we got? London, Los Angeles. Keep them coming. Keep guessing, guys. Miami, New York, awesome. Yeah, it actually took place in LA, which I think is so cool because you guys, Angel City is based out of LA. I think that's so awesome. Um, I just actually found that out like a few days ago. Um, but now wheelchair tennis is included in all of the four Grand Slam events, which is really cool because we participate alongside with the able body players. Um, and World Team Cup is now a big thing. That was really the biggest tournament where they had multiple countries participating and that is still going on to this day. Um, but yeah, so clearly we've made a lot of progress. Um, and yes, you can see here 160 events go on internationally. So I think that's really cool. Um, really big 40 countries represented on the tour and by our US team, we've won 16 Paralympic medals, which they're, they're going back for more in Tokyo, but I think that is super awesome that we're representing. Um, and just the growth of this sport has been crazy. The big thing about this picture, that's why I added it, is that our athletes this year were included with the able-bodied athletes in all the promotional things, everything that's getting ready to go out for Tokyo. That's really huge. We've been included now, fully integrated into um, the high performance developmental side of um, the USTA, so the governing body for wheelchair or for tennis in the US. Um, so that's been, that's just the growth that I've seen just since I've been playing has been really, really amazing. All right. Now I'm just going to run through our schedule. I would really, really love for you guys to be interactive today. So if you're at home sitting um, or whatever, wherever you are, if I would really love for you to participate and go along with me. Um, but I'm going to quickly run through a warm up that I do on a daily basis, multiple times a day. Um, some band work that we use as well. And then I'll run through like the basics of tennis. So like forehand, backhand, how we push with our racket, and then just a basic serve toss. Um, and then we'll move on to some racket skills. So I don't know if anybody has rackets and balls there at home. Maybe, maybe not. If not, that's okay, you can just watch me. But, um, but those are really fun. And um, those just kind of keep you like engaged in your, like your hand-eye coordination with 
the racket and everything. So we tend to do those sometimes too, just as a fun little, fun little task. And then I will um, demonstrate, well, I won't demonstrate. We will show you guys some of the drills and practices that we do on court. Um, both with our national team and with my collegiate team here in Alabama. So I'm going to now, okay, here we go. hopefully you guys can see me. Um, if you guys want to run along this warm up with me, again, I would really love that. Um, something that I do every day, I really love it. it, gets the whole upper body and extremities warmed up so that way we're ready to play to go into our matches. So first, we're going to start with some neck rotations. So we're just going to go neck rotations to the right. Loosening up that neck. You really want to tuck your chin and get the best range of motion you can here. And then we'll go to the left, other way. Nice job. Great job. Okay, next we're gonna do shoulder shrugs forward. So I really want you to bring your shoulders as high as you can to those ears. Forward. Nice. And then we're gonna do shoulder shrugs back. Focus on squeezing those shoulder blades together as you come back and opening up that chest. Nice, you can go at whatever pace works best for you. Sweet. Okay, we're going to go into arm circles forward. So I want you to start with your arms out to the side. And we're going to be careful of the things around you. Also, beware. I know you're at home, so I'm not sure. But um, we're going to start with small circles forward. So just really small, as, qu as quick as you can without hurting yourselves, but pace that you feel comfortable with. Small circles forward. All right, we're going to go a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. And then as big as you can. Again, watch your surroundings. Be careful with that one. All right, we're gonna switch small circles back again. So start small, really get quick reps in there. Nice job, a little bit bigger. Awesome. And as big as you can. Nice, these ones we call chain breakers. You're gonna bring your arms up like this and a parallel to the floor and you're going to come apart crossing your arms out in front of you really focus on squeezing those shoulder blades again and opening up that chest here nice this one is whew, after bench press this can get a little a little rough <laughs> all right next we're going to warm up our forearms so i want you to extend your arms out in front and Rotate your wrists. You're going to do wrist circles in. Just in right now. Awesome job. And then we're going to do circles out. Really be intentional about that, getting full range of motion and squeezing those forearms in here. Awesome job. Okay, we're going to go into trunk twist next. Rotating sides, reach as far back as you can and alternate sides here. Really, this is just loosening up your core, stretching that back. You can also just do some dynamic twists, whatever feels best for you. All right, great. Now, we're gonna move into band work. I realize you guys may not have bands, um, but you can use a bath towel if you have a bath towel um, or an old t-shirt. So whatever works, again, you're welcome to join along with me or just observe. So just feel free. I'll give you guys a few seconds. I'll grab my bands here. Nice. All right, so everybody ready? Back and ready here? Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, this is really weird sometimes because I can't tell <laughs> if I'm like in the frame. Okay, we're gonna start with banded pull-aparts. So if you have a towel, you can just really focus. I want you to focus on spreading your arms as far as you can. You might have to, I know the towel's kind of tough because it's not gonna stretch super well, 
But yeah, you really want to just focus on bringing those arms apart. Nice, we'll do two sets of 10 here. Squeeze those shoulder blades and be sure to keep your arms parallel to the floor here. Nice, yeah. You can also do them with that weight. What you can also do too is lean forward and use a weight and just bring your arms back behind you out to the side again. That's also an alternative. Oh, I realize this is kind of tricky without without actual band, but all right, we'll do, if you haven't done your second set yet, do your second set. And this really just works too. We do band work a lot to maintain um, the strength and the muscles of our, of our shoulders without really overbearing them, um, kind of prevents injury and things like that. We can, like some of our players um, do band work to warm up their shoulders for a match, which is really good. Um, so yeah. Okay. Next we're going to do external rotation, which again, I realized maybe with the towel might be a little difficult, but what you're going to do is take the band or whatever you have with you in front of you, pin it to one side of your, like your hip at your hip. And then with your opposite hand, you're good. Excuse me. You're going to keep your, el your elbow pinned to your side and you're going to bring your hand out to the side here. Let me see if I can. There you go. Keep your hand out to the side. Again, keep your elbow pinned and really focus on that movement. Again, we'll do two sets of 10 here. And then you wanna do that on both sides. Oh, Josh, I see. We're adaptive athletes, we all adapt. That's very true, thank you. Okay, now let's do it on the other side here. Again, focus on really pinning that elbow. You don't want it coming out to the side here. Nice job. And then if you want to do one more set. Great. On the other side. Yes, very true. Keep the thumb on top to target the rotator cuff. Exactly. Thank you, Megan. Awesome, switch to the other side if you haven't. Again, players will bring bands in their bags out to the court um, and use this as a sort of warm up. All right, awesome. There are many others that you can do, but those were just the two that I chose to demonstrate today. Um, but I really like band work a lot. It kind of like, I mean, you still work up a sweat, I feel, if you're doing multiple sets, but it's not really overbearing. And um, with this practice over time, it really helps, again, maintain those muscles in the shoulder and prevent injury. So it's, it's very important, especially for the, those of us that are in chairs and using our arms and our shoulders on a daily basis. Um, so that's very important too. Okay, next, we're gonna move to racket skills. So, I have a tennis and balls. If you don't, that's okay. You can just watch and observe. Um, but I'm just gonna show a basic, a basic drill that we do really to just focus on, again, maintaining um, control of the ball. So like, like short little movements where we're not going wild or whatever, it's maintaining that control of the ball um, without, and like keeping that relationship between our eyes, the ball and the racket. So I'm gonna show you, these are, I guess I just call these racket tap-ups. Um, basically I have the racket in my hand um, with the grip that I use to hit. So this is the semi-Western grip. It's basically the V of your hand goes on top of the grip. I'm gonna hold my racket flat. Hold on, it would help if you guys could see completely. Okay, um, and I'm going to basically just tap the ball. Let's see how, how long I can get this, um, but keep it up, right? Again, I'm just doing steady, short, whoo, stay short movements here. And whoo, sometimes we challenge ourselves and see how long we can keep it going. If you really focus, you can go for quite some time. But yeah, so that's one drill. 
that we like to do. Um, there's another one that is self rally forehand, which this is one that I've seen um, on the USTA. This one was on the USTA website, but um, they have an able body individual demonstrating this um, in the video that's on the site, but I don't know sure I could do this as well. So basically you tap up, let the ball bounce, and then continue just tapping the ball up. Again, it's maintaining that control. And kind of really you have to focus on keeping the face of the racket parallel to the ground. So you're not going all over the place and you're really maintaining that control. So yeah, little things like this, little tasks sometimes, even as a player that's more advanced and <laughs> more, um, I guess I just don't do these things on a daily basis, but um, they're good things to kind of keep yourself in check with because sometimes, you know, you can lose a little bit of control and those are just some short little, little rocket skill drills. Um, okay, next we're gonna move to some of the drills that we used um, on the national team and at Alabama here. So we're gonna move to the hub drill, Jen, if you will. And this video will kind of demonstrate the drill. And then um, if anyone has any questions about the drill, I can walk through that. But basically, oops, sorry. <laughs> the hub drill is basically where on the tennis court, the hub is the point of recovery after the player hits every shot. So the hub is back behind the baseline, basically at the T, a little bit further back from the T. And that's basically where after we hit a shot, we either turn in or out um, and book it back to the hub because we have to be ready for the next ball that comes. Um, so this drill will kind of demonstrate when you hit a ball that's on your dominant side, you turn in towards kind of towards the court. And when you hit a ball on your um, opposite side, you turn away. And so this kind of shows that and we practice this drill. So that way we can focus on our turns because in wheelchair tennis, mobility and your turns are the biggest, biggest thing you can't get to if you, you're not going to be any good. If you can't get to the ball, <laughs> you need to be able to get to the ball so you can hit the ball. So we work on this to work on the power of our turns, um, how tight we turn, you know, just the quality and then maintaining that pattern. That pattern is what we use in a match setting. So we replicate that. And you can also do this drill. You can do it um, with a racket and hitting or without. So we'll go ahead and watch this. Very specific drill called the hub. This drill will help you understand the three specific turns used in the sport. The inside turn or turning in. The outside turn or turning out. And reverse mobility. An important part of this process is also having an understanding of which grip to hold the racket in. Not only to hit the ball, but also equally as important to push the chair with control and strength. This is a drill that can be done with or without a ball being implemented for ground strokes. Please make sure that if you toss a ball at each of the four turns to be struck by the player, that you as the coach get out of the way of the player's visual field of play and that of the flight path of the hit itself. Remember to include this turn to ensure that the player understands the process of covering the court behind them when a ball is returned to the side of the court they were just in. Mobility is the most critical part of wheelchair tennis. As we coaches always say, you may have the most beautiful of strokes, but if you cannot get in a position to hit, those strokes will not be able to help you. For more tips and instruction, go to usta.com. And just a reminder that the link to this video, if you want to watch again, is in the chat. So you can copy that to add to your training list. You ready for the next one, Lauren? Um, not quite. We have a question from Megan. Do all the sport chairs have an anti-tipper caster? Is it possible to reach back so far that you've fallen out of your chair? They do. I should have shown that to you. I will show you my chair. Thank you. This is my tennis chair. Sorry, I'm trying to get the camera here right. This is my chair. 
Um, it does have an anti-tip bar that extends out pretty far. Can you guys see that? Okay. Um, and so yes, that does, when we lean back to serve, you can lean super far. There are very few people that I have seen tip backwards and that's maybe because their anti-tip is, is not as far back. So there's just because the chair, the way that their chair may have been made is that it's a little bit further in and they may have just been so aggressive in going for that turn that they may have flipped. But typically that doesn't happen. Um, also, the this chair, I don't know if you guys have seen wheelchair basketball chairs, but this chair has a little bit more camber. Um, so we're able to turn faster and we also don't have restrictions on the height. So you can't, let me see if you can see my feet here. Basketball players, I think, have restrictions on height. Mm -hmm. You have to correct me if I'm wrong, but okay. Um, yes, so they do. My chair, my chair, since I sit, since I'm pretty small and short, <laughs> they, my chair sits a little bit higher off the ground. So you can see my hips are like right here. Um, but yeah, and then I also have a knee anchor that comes in front that holds my knees in really tight. So that way any movement that's going on below here, that's all stationary. So I'm not losing any power when my legs are moving. Um, so I'm basically one with my chair. Um, and then I realized I completely skipped over the rocket skills. I told you I'm new at this, so it's okay. Um, but when you hit your forehand, a forehand is a shot that you hit on your dominant side. So you're coming from low to high across your body and then a backhand is a, a shot that you hit starting on your the opposite side of your dominant side and you're also going from low to high um, and if you're in a chair it's super important to keep your hand on your racket the hand that you're hitting with the whole time like you don't typically have time to set your racket down um, and then your opposite hand always has to stay on the wheel because you're using that in your turns you're using that i mean you'll use it to push obviously but in your turns you really can use those your opposite hand for minor adjustments to get to that ball so um when you push with your racket on your with your hand on your racket again that semi-western grip that they showed in the video and that i mentioned before rest the grip of your racket rests exactly on the rim of the chair so let me see if I can turn that. You can kind of see here, I rest this on the rim and then wrap my fingers around it. And that really allows, also because the grip of the racket is really, um, really great if you, if you change your grip, but that, that really allows me to still have a lot of control of the, of the wheel. Some people, some players do wrap their whole hand around the entire tire with the grip, with the racket. Um, but, um, I, I've just never been taught that way. Um, and personally, I feel like you lose a little bit of the grip of the actual racket when you do that, but that's okay. Some people have other preferences. Okay. We can move on to the next one. Thank you, Jen. If you want to, Jen, you can skip to my video of the ping pong and I'll just run through that. That way we have time for questions. Great. So this is um, sped up just a little bit, but this is one of my teammates and I were hitting, um, and this is a drill that's called ping pong. Um, you can play this in a double setting too, where there are two people on the opposite sides of the net, but basically one player hits and you really have to focus on turning and recovering back. Um, this also helps you work on communication with your partner. So if you look, I think there was one where I just about may have been close to her. You really work on like, okay, I'm here, like things like that. Um, but yeah, we use this a lot because you're getting that shot in, but then you also need to work on recovering. Nice. All right, if you wanna move on to the next. And then this one is basically another version of that drill, but we hit two balls here. So this 
kind of implements the fact that you hit another ball, you have to recover and be ready to hit that next ball. So in doubles, you might not always have the ball come back to you immediately after you hit, but most times in singles you do. So this really um, reinforces the fact that you have to turn and get back um, and get ready for that second ball. So again, we kind of just ran through these and these keep us very active. This is, yes, um, the back line is the baseline. The hub is just, I can't remember if they had said if it was at the T or just a little bit back, but I, most players tend to recover further back. That's why we're not so far up into, far up into the court. Um, and it allows us time because if the first bounce comes in, lands deeper in the court, we still have that space from the back court to have time to get um, get that ball off of the first or second bounce. And then let me see, I think there was another. Yes, that does show the constant movement. There's no hitting and waiting. Yep, exactly. That's, that's really one of the things that we emphasize is, is movement and agility because you have to constantly be moving. You will see like you don't know how fast the next ball is coming back and <laughs> even if it mattered how fast or slow it was coming back you still shouldn't wait because if a player sends a ball back that's in a position where you're not ready and you don't have enough time to get there and make adjustments in your chair minor adjustments whether it's like the way you're facing the ball or how far into the court you need to get those things are all very important so yes, we're very, very quick, fast paced sport here. Not quite basketball, but. All right. So yes, if anyone has any questions, um, feel free. I don't know if there's a way you can put them in the chat if you'd like, or if you want to unmute, I don't know if that's a thing or if they have the hand raising, you know what I mean? But just. We'll just go for it. What was my recruit? Oh, okay. What was my recruitment process like? So that was interesting, Sydney, um, because I had no clue that wheelchair tennis was in, in college setting was even a thing. Um, and one of my coaches um, back in San Diego, where I'm from, hit with Dana Mathewson, which is on the national team, and she's going to Tokyo this year. He was her coach. So she, um, he was her coach. She played for University of Arizona. So I thought for sure, and <laughs> University of Arizona was recruiting me pretty heavily since I was a junior um, in high school. And I thought for sure, since I was so close to San Diego, I was like, yes, I'm going there. I am for sure. I hadn't committed yet, but I was almost positive. Um, and then, I was at a tournament. This is typically typically where what happens is coaches will go to tournaments with junior players or just whatever. And if they see potential, they will seek you out because I was at a tournament in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That was my first flyaway tournament that I'd ever been to. Um, I had Evan, my coach at University of Alabama, approach me and say, you know, we, we also have a team, which I had no clue. I thought that Arizona was the only team. Um, and I should clarify, we now have many more teams in the collegiate setting, um, but we don't often have time or have opportunities to play each other in like big college tournaments. So the big um, tournament of the year right now that we have is college nationals. And that's where we'll go and we'll all compete against each other. Um, and that's how I've come to have four um, national championships, which I'm very thankful for, very, feel very blessed. But um, yes, yeah, so he started recruiting me. He, he flew me out to Alabama um, and I came for a visit. And the thing that I loved about Alabama was the team aspect it was just so cool we had so many they had I think three or four players at the time and I wasn't gonna have that at Arizona and so I thought you know I need to be a part of a team I loved the south and um loved Tuscaloosa and the university so I committed 
to Alabama. And that's basically what that was like. So thank you, that was a great question. Both bounces have to happen inside the court or just the initial shot. The first bounce has to bounce inside the lines of the court. So whether it's singles or doubles, that will apply to the lines of the court. So that's a great question as well. Could you describe your training to get ready for a tournament? Yeah, so that's a really great question. So right now, um, we are in the summer. We don't, we, we play tournaments on our own um, during the summer, but not with our team typically. Um, they're not funded by the university. So we will spend this time since we're not heavily playing tournaments, doing a lot of drilling um, and then focusing on little th like things that we need to do to fine tune our game. So this is where we make some of the changes so that way we can work to get more reps in these changes and then be ready for um, tournament season. But when we're in season, um, it's basically, again, getting high reps and then moving into match play scenarios. So we'll play many, um, we'll have many match days and do singles plays. We'll do um, baseline games. So like that, how I said that back line, we do many games instead of drilling while we're in the court, we'll play some, some baseline games and things like that. But it's heavily um, focused on the match setting that's in there. Are there collegiate scholarships for wheelchair tennis? Yes, there are. Um, that it it kind of depends. I think I think that the USTA has some smaller scholarships out there available to um, individuals looking to play collegiate. Um, but then also schools often tend to have resources. Um, so it kind of just depends on what's out there. There are also also scholarships, many for individuals with disabilities that are looking to go into certain programs and schools. So whether you're looking, whether it's for sports specifically or not, there are many, many scholarships out there um, and many large adapted organizations do offer um, scholarships and things like that. So it's kind of, it's kind of just a little, they're, they're kind of all over the place, but there are many out there, so. Summertime training in Alabama. Heat and humidity is a little bit uncomfortable. I, yes, I have a very, I am not as good at hydrating as I should be. However, there's always room for improvement, but I have been, <laughs> that has been a main focus. Yes, we do sweat a lot, but we keep electrolyte drinks and things like that out on the court with us. And to be honest, I've been here now for five years, so I've gotten used to it. Some of our players that are not from Alabama come back in the fall, and it is it is rough. It is really rough. It does get hot, and um, our ATs are out there most practices when it's when it's that hot with cool towels. Um, our tournaments we won't play obviously over the heat index, which I'm pretty sure humidity is definitely taken into consideration. Um, but it is, it is a little bit uncomfortable. Most times I'm, I'm hydrating very well. And then I'll come back and drink like a recovery, um, like a fit aid or a noon tablet or things like that. I really love those. So, um, it's when I, I typically have one cup of coffee in the morning, that's all I allow myself because it is very dehydrating. And then I'm just pounding water. So that's the biggest thing. Um, let's see. Are there only other players who serve with only one hand? Yeah, there are players that serve with one hand. There is a player, I forget where he's from, but his arm on his left side, he doesn't have um, his full arm. So he pushes with his stub. I think, I'm not sure if that's the correct. And then he tosses the ball up with his, the fingers of his hand with his racket and then swings. Um, so it is, it's possible. It's very, very possible. Favorite skill to train and least or, okay. That's a good one. Hmm. Hmm. I would like to say that serving, my serve is I think my shot that I feel 
most proud of. So I do love training that. However, it gets exhausting on your, it gets really tiring on your shoulder, but, um, but yeah, that, and then basically I think volleys are also, a volley is a ball that you hit where it doesn't bounce. So it'll come across the net and you catch it out of the air. And when you stick those just right, that's, that's probably the best feeling. So I love those. Um, my least favorite or toughest skill, um, probably just my backhand and repetitions on my backhand because that can get a little tricky sometimes and maintaining control of the spin over the ball can sometimes be tough, but yeah. Okay, any other questions? Well, we are getting close to the end here. Oh, I see, 7.45, perfect. Well, thank you. Oh, any injuries, real quick, I will touch on that. Tricep tendonitis has been <laughs> killer for me, but um, over the years, our strength trainer has worked really well with me um, on it, so I'm not re-injuring, re-injuring, yeah. Um, but Yes, that's also it. But anyway, I don't want to keep you guys any longer, but thank you so much. This was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a lot. And if you haven't tried out wheelchair tennis, you should. You can try it with anyone. You can hop on any court, any flat surface, really. So <laughs> just give it a go. And I encourage you to keep me posted on how it goes. Well, I put Lauren's social media information in there for all of you guys to make sure you follow her if you have other questions to follow up on. But let's all give a round of applause, whether you want to use your emoji, you can kind of show it on your screen to thank Lauren so much for sharing. And we hope this is the first of many times we get to work with her at Angel City. And maybe we'll get to see you on a court here uh, sometime for maybe even the games in the fall. Yes. You know, no pressure, just put me to <laughs> I also want to thank our sponsors that we had here today. So the Orthopedic Institute um, for Children, Fox Sports, the Hanger Clinic, Gold Meets Golden, and of course, the Hartford. So again, remember to follow Lauren on social media, and I hope this sparked an interest for all of you guys in wheelchair tennis. Coming up, our next session is Para Canoe with Caitlin Velforth. Hopefully I said that correctly. Um, so we only have one more week of these virtual sessions. So make sure you guys stay up, load up that brain knowledge and we'll get out on the court soon, all hopefully all together. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Lauren. Guys. See you later.